This is a Tesseract, and that's pretty much all you'll ever know for sure about it. Hmm. Some of us are actually comic book fans, so we understood that this was the cosmic cube that Thanos was after in the books. What we didn't know is that the MCU would turn this into the damn space gym a little later for no reason at all. But yeah, your sin is wrong, bro. Secret military research facility on brightly lit exposed Mesa. This implies that those they're keeping this a secret from would even be able to access this facility. You said it yourself, it's on a Mesa. Mesas are notoriously difficult to reach due to how isolated they are. CinemaSense has never seen Cowboys of Moo Mesa. Helicopters do not need to follow roadways. I'm not sure the movie is saying that, like, at all. Actually, the film shows that the landing pad is directly up this path, so what it's actually showing is that it's simply about to land. Colson wears sunglasses at night. I've never understood this weird obsession with calling out people wearing glasses at night or inside a building. Shades are just as much for personal style as they are for blocking out light. I mean, you can still see while wearing shades at night. And it's not like he needs them for this bright scene or anything. Nick Fury's character development literally begins and ends with iPad. What does that even mean? Fury is a character that has existed since 1963, and the ultimate version of Nick Fury, who this character is based on, has been a thing since 2001. Not to mention the MCU's version of Nick Fury was in other movies before this one, where his character was more thoroughly explored, notably Iron Man 2. Heck, even if you want to say you don't know much about him, isn't that the point of a spy? Exciting superhero movie starts with plotting exposition. The one thing you fail to do in these videos is explain to us why exposition is bad. You have a blanket ban on exposition, but then other times you ask for it, so there must be some criteria in which exposition is required, or at the very least acceptable, considering you don't make a distinction at all. Possibly racist movie kills two Asian extras in a row. I think it would be more racist to suggest that Asian actors can't be killed simply because they're Asian. What you're doing is pointing out their otherness, and what the movie is doing is treating everyone the same by killing everyone. That's kind of my argument for silly things like suggesting movies like Total Recall are sexist because they dared to kill women in the film. In the scene everyone says this about, there are five men killed to three women. The implication is that only the men should be killed in that scene, and that's sexist. Same logic applies here. Tesseract powers allow for mind control by tapping the center of the chest. That's because the movie is suggesting this is a change of heart. It's similar to how people describe love as being in the heart when it's actually in the brain. It's metaphorical is what I'm saying. Dangerous energy source, space doorway with gamma radiation? Screw it. Transport by hand. Says this while showing he's actually transporting it with this briefcase. Also, what the heck is this symbol? That doesn't look like any nine I've ever heard of. The bulletproof vest fake out. Yeah, but isn't this the point of a bulletproof vest? The scene does not contain a lap dance. That's sexist. Bruce Banner is hiding out where only little girls and S.H.I.E.L.D. can find him. I have no clue why CinemaSins believes this is a sin. If he's asking why can S.H.I.E.L.D. find him, the film implies that they've always kept tabs on him. And the little girl knows of Bruce because he's been helping people as a doctor here. So, where is the sin? S.H.I.E.L.D. answers to four people on vertical plasma screens? Those look like LCDs, but that's besides the point. This is the World Security Council, a joint international body that oversees the internationally operating S.H.I.E.L.D. What, did you think S.H.I.E.L.D. was autonomous? That's like asking why does MI6 answer to Parliament? Loki's scepter is also a space phone. Well, considering it's one of the immensely powerful soul gems that you just saw reduce Hawkeye to a flying monkey, yeah, I think trying to reduce it to something as primitive as a space phone is really sinful. The helicarrier is hella stupid. Oh, I was waiting for an explanation why this was stupid. Typically, when someone says something is stupid, they give a reason. Like, when I refer to your series as stupid, I have a bevy of evidence for that claim. Cloaking device is dumb, but I also don't know why they're hiding. So, you think a clandestine organization being clandestine is dumb. Gotcha. Cap pays off a bet he never technically accepted. If they're showing him paying the bet, then this is the confirmation that he did accept it. We're sweeping every wirelessly accessible camera on the planet. Considering the context of the bet in the previous sin, I find this painfully ironic. I mean, this is a series that has, up to this point, depicted physically impossible rage monsters that gain mass out of nowhere and literal magic. A futuristic organization being able to access cameras as pedestrian in comparison. Hell, the CIA were doing that in real life. Ever heard of Edward Snowden? Uh, ladies and gentlemen, if you will, look right here. Okay, you know how you're on an airplane and the flight attendant asks you to turn your cell phone off? And you're like, I ain't turning my cell phone off. That don't have nothing to do with no damn airplane. Well, this is what we get. This is what happens. It gets up there, bounces around on the satellites, and blam! Just turn your damn cell phone off. Now you're gonna drive off a cliff tonight because your GPS don't work. 
Loki makes grand appearance changes that barely change his appearance. CinemaSense thinks this looks barely different than this. Did he just jump from a plane? Yes, he did. I know you made this video in 2012, but here in 2014, it's clearly a thing with him, as seen in this year's biggest hit, Winter Soldier. <laughs> Marvel's never going to make anything bigger than this, especially since they don't own Spider-Man. Late night kidnap brotherly argument on a mountain. Another sin pointing out something we can all see on the screen. I really should make a cliche for that. Superhero pissing contest. Sinning Iron Man versus Thor versus Cap. That's worth these many sins. Superhero pissing contest number two. Sinning Iron Man versus Thor versus Cap versus Hulk versus Fury versus Black Widow versus the Mind Gem. That's worth these many sins. Cap and Iron Man almost kiss. Jeremy has pissed off all the shippers. I, I mean, that's homophobic. Mighty helicarrier basically neutered by one freaking arrow. Well, yeah, that's Hawkeye and his trick arrows. I mean, you said that like that arrow didn't cause a massive explosion about a third the size of one of the turbines. Computer virus delivered by arrow. I think the real sin here is your incessant questioning about why Hawkeye is one of the Avengers, but you completely ignore these scenes showing his deadly accuracy in these incredible trick arrows. Imagine if they ever adapt Kate Bishop and the shenanigans she and Hawkeye will get up to. Might even make a miniseries out of it where the last episode ends up being trash, but the journey was fun. For a super soldier, Captain America is a terrible shot. Well, yeah, he's not Hawkeye. Besides, he's on a falling out of the air helicarrier shooting an automatic weapon with recoil. Give the old man a break. Loki tricks Thor with the old Lucy Charlie Brown football prank. Jeremy says this as if that's not surprising every single time. You watch, he'll get the next one. I just got a feeling. Active, long, boring fight scene between characters we are already trying not to hate. Oof, what a take. Natasha and Clint are beloved characters in the actual fandom, and they are far more interesting than you give them credit for. In a world where superpowered people, aliens, and techno suits abound, these two keep up with only their training and the physical attributes of a human. Isn't that why you morons like Batman? Fury gives intimidating death stare to a computer screen. Intimidating death stare? That's racist. Dying person can finish their last profound statement before dying cliche. Oh, I'm sorry. Is death inconvenient for you? Bad news negates the need for medical care. Ah, so death is inconvenient for you. Cap gets AIDS from handling bloody baseball cards. Jeremy implies Coulson had AIDS for literally no reason at all. Besides, you wouldn't get AIDS. You'd get HIV. The virus potentially causes the disease. Does anyone know anything about viruses? Basically indestructible heroes still need Little League pep talk to get up for the big challenge. None of the Avengers are indestructible. Okay, Hulk might be, but he's not even here listening to this. Thor has trouble picking up his hammer, but it's never explained. No, that's absolutely not what this scene is, and you are just making things up at this point. This scene is meant to show Thor being reflective of his brash actions that allowed Loki to escape and his near-death experience a few moments ago. What he's doing is gathering himself, wondering if he is still worthy. Every gadget in this movie has to glow with a blue light. Jeremy is a blood. Loki patiently waits for Iron Man to remove the damaged suit, grab a drink, banter a bit, and then put on a new suit instead of just killing it. It's called arrogance, something you display every time you think you can point out the flaws in a movie. Too bad Loki's mind control powers only work if the scepter touches the exact center of a person's chest. Loki could theoretically touch any part of someone's body to mind control them. He, like professional shooters, aim for center mass because it's an easier target to hit. The problem was that Loki was unaware of Stark's arc reactor protecting his heart. Generic bad guy soldiers whose abilities and shortcomings are never explained. It's almost like movies show you things rather than tell you them most of the time. What I find ironic here, though, is that earlier you lamented the film's plotting exposition. Why wouldn't the film explaining these aliens' abilities be plotting exposition, and what excuse would you give for not sinning this one like the one you did earlier? Why are they even trying to stop an army that we never once see kill or injure a human being? So what you're saying is, these guys weren't killed or injured? Damn, they should be on the Avengers. Captain America's really more of a super gymnast than a superhero. I love when Batman fanboys make arguments against Batman and don't realize it. Besides... <laughs> you were saying? I need men in those buildings. Lead the people down and away from the streets. You got it. We're gonna set up a perimeter all the way down at 39th Street. Black Widow knows exactly how to handle and fire an alien weapon seconds after picking it up. And you would think you'd start showing her some goddamn respect after she, and Hawkeye, demonstrates badassery, but you're you. Production Design 101. Don't imitate anything from Transformers. I'm going to need someone to explain to me how this looks like the damn Transformers. It's a giant worm with armor, and he's comparing it to sentient robots. Help. Hulk can suddenly control his powers because the story demands. Except it isn't suddenly, because they showed Hulk has the ability to control his transformation at the end of The Incredible Hulk. 
It's almost like when Marvel recasts a character, people's brains lose their ability to function. Hope no one dies before the MCU is over. Could be a royal sh show. Loki gets caught in monologue. CinemaSins sends this scene. That's worth these many sins. Nick Fury fires a missile at an American to stop him from firing a missile at American. This logic contradicts your previous logic in this sin. The council would rather definitely kill everyone in New York with a nuclear weapon than maybe have some die in an alien invasion. There is no gravity in space, but Iron Man falls back to Earth anyway. There is no gravity in space? Oh, we are going to have fun with this one in the future. Just answer me this one question. If there is no gravity in space, where do you think gravity exists? On Earth? You know Earth is in space, right? Right? Credit scene to tease the next movie turns out to be homework assignment. This man doesn't know who Thanos is. How are you even qualified to make these videos? Well, the bright side is there's no way you can keep getting away with making these too much longer. People on YouTube are very intelligent and they pick up on BS fairly quickly. I have faith in internet discourse is what I'm saying. Marvel's officially full of themselves, subjects audience to 30 second logo. Marvel's flipbook logo is one of the greatest of all time logos. This would be a legit sin if you were referring to Doctor Strange's opening logo. <laughs> In order for you to know why the Avengers are here, you needed to watch Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D., which I have neither the time nor the patience to sit through so I can understand the movie. You absolutely do not need to watch Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. to understand this scene. They clearly explain what it is they're trying to accomplish, like multiple times. Also, the movie makes me do research so that I can figure out Agent Coulson is behind this Avengers op, which is confusing because he died in the last Avengers movie. Or did he? This is very misleading. Coulson only exists in the TV universe currently, same as Daredevil or Jessica Jones. They haven't referenced him in the film since he died in the Avengers, and Kevin Feige has been adamant that, for all intents and purposes, Coulson is dead to the film series. Until Captain Marvel, of course. Here's Thor doing what he does best, punching and kicking dudes. Here's Jeremy doing what he does best pointing things out on the screen and treating them as if they're sins. Glorious shot of all the Avengers in one frame is absolutely ruined by the complete and total pointlessness of this opening battle. First of all, this scene isn't pointless. It sets up the Maximoff twins, because otherwise you'd be crying about how they don't establish these characters. And if you knew that this scene was set up by Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D., then you'd know why they were here and what they're trying to accomplish. So, Jeremy Fane's ignorance cliche. Language! Swear police. This coming from the motherfucker that fucking censors his swear words on damn YouTube. F I mean, who the f does this stupid sh No one else is gonna deal with the fact that Cap just said language. Just goes to show how horrible Hydra is, or more how good the heroes are, that they can endlessly crack jokes during these battles. I would say it's more to do with how the MCU is portrayed as a comedic series at this point. I mean, people were getting their asses handed to them in Infinity War, but they were still cracking jokes. Concentrate fire on the weak ones. This is precisely why the Avengers shouldn't have any weak ones, aka Black Widow and Hawkeye. You, like Von Strucker here, are making the mistake of thinking Black Widow and Hawkeye are weak in any capacity. You don't need superpowers to be strong. Just ask Batman fanboys. I agree. <laughs> I was gonna say something along that line. It's complete horror. We have an enhance in the field. And then that's all we ever see of Quicksilver during the entire battle. Well, that's bullshit, considering you skipped his scene with Hawkeye right before this. You didn't see that coming? Yay! Indeed, yay! And all you have to do is randomly push some part of the wall and it opens. Except it wasn't random, and if you'd shown this scene to your audience, they would understand that you're flat out lying to them. Hey Jay, give me an IR scan of the room, real quick. The wall to your left. I'm reading steel reinforcement. And an air current. Please be a secret door, please be a secret door, please be a secret door. Yay. Hey, big guy. This movie suggests that between the last film and this one, Black Widow figured out some magical interpersonal hand-wiping connection with the Hulk she can exploit to get Hulk back to banner status, which is some bullshit. In a universe with sentient robots talking raccoons and mutant, uh, I mean, enhanced individuals, why is it so hard to believe that the Avengers could develop post-hypnotic therapy for their most destructive personality? Also, a girl who has been experimented on and held captive decides to defend those who experimented on her and held her captive. Again, you're being very misleading here. They're not protecting Von Strucker, and in fact, volunteered for these experiments. Before Tony became Iron Man, Wanda and Pietro were victims of Stark's military weapons. This made them hate Tony, and by extension, the Avengers. 
Does anyone else find it unnerving that these two played husband and wife the last time we saw them? Now they're twins? That's kind of creepy, right? Only if you're 13 years old, I guess. Also, here's a list of actors who've played siblings and lovers. Rose McGowan and David Arquette. Bill Hader and Kristen Wiig, Tony Collette and Steve Carell, Paul Rudd and Elizabeth Banks, multiple times, Will Arnett and Amy Poehler. Please, please. Well damn, Beats is even showing up in the Maria Callas music videos. Damn, Jeremy and the movie makes a pop culture reference. But since I don't send movies... You've been after this thing since S.H.I.E.L.D. collapsed. But why? Wasn't Loki's scepter on top of the Stark Tower at the end of the last movie? Did none of you go and get it? I don't watch your damn TV show, so why can't you at least explain how the f***ing scepter got into the wrong hands again for us movie fans, huh? This play is so much more ironic now that TV Sins exists. So, this is a sin for the fact that TV Sins exists. I will never see this building as anything other than a Blue Jay. Who cares? That's not a problem with the film. That's a problem with your weird-ass perspective on things. Besides, it looks more like a cassowary. He's fast and she's weird. Movie thinks a throwaway punchline will make me forget it does nothing to explain Scarlet Witch's abilities, but movie is wrong. The movies have not explained how f***ing gamma radiation causes Bruce Banner to become the Hulk, and you seem to be cool with that. Also, you don't have to lie to get your point across. Agent Hill clearly attempted to explain their abilities in this very scene. Their abilities? He's got increased metabolism and improved thermal homeostasis. Her thing is neuroelectric interfacing, telekinesis, mental manipulation. He's fast and she's weird. Well, there goes the end of Iron Man 3 and the promise to destroy all the suits. I guess since Pepper isn't in this movie, she can't object. If she were, she probably wouldn't object either, because those aren't suits. They're robots. What if next time aliens roll up to the club, and they will, they couldn't get past the bouncer? Well, do they have suitable fake IDs? Oh, come on. One of this movie's biggest flaws is having Tony Stark behaving as though he can create artificial intelligence without it instantly going rogue against humanity. So, Tony has never seen Terminator? Or The Matrix? I don't think you've seen The Matrix, or at least understood it. The machines initially tried living harmoniously with humanity, but the humans decided to... Wait, why am I explaining The Matrix when I could just see Hold your... on, Birdman. This is a remaster. You've already seen The Matrix Reloaded, so this gag doesn't really work as well as it did the first time. Okay, moving right along. You find a place in Brooklyn yet? I don't think I can afford a place in Brooklyn. Wait, you're a celebrity working in a highly funded secret government agency, and you can't afford a place in Brooklyn? Are they paying you in 1940s money? This is a tongue-in-cheek reference to the gentrification of Brooklyn you mentioned in your Civil War video. I'm pretty sure Captain f***ing America can live anywhere he damn well pleases. Neither was Omaha Beach, Blondie. Stop trying to scare us. In this movie's unwarranted Stan Lee cameo, Stan Lee will play one of the guys that stormed Normandy, because of course he will. There's quite a few things I want to say about this, especially after making the Infinity War video, but I'll keep it short and sweet. Fuck you, Jeremy. Now we won't see him anymore, and I'm sure that will make your twisted ass happy. 20 sins. He gets a laugh out of Banner trying to lift Thor's hammer, but dodges geek orgasm question of what would happen if Banner were in full-on Hulk mode while trying to lift it. They've literally already shown this. The Hulk cannot pick up Majolar. Oh, and for the intelligent people that didn't realize I was making a joke calling it Majolar in the original video, yeah, this sends for you. And? Widow? Oh, no, no, that's not a question I need answered. Thank God, my sexual fantasies would have taken a huge hit if she did. That's dangerously close to Jeremy Says Boner. So, I'll do five sins instead of the usual ten. See? I'm nice. Ish. Also, why did he pick the damaged suit to download into when there were plenty of perfectly good suits to do that? Presumably because the damaged unit no longer had a working Iron Legion protocol, making it easy for Ultron to upload himself. Also, these are not suits. You can clearly see that there is no space to fit a human inside the damaged Ultron suit. I mean unit. God damn it, you even have me doing it. Wait, so one wallet from Cap Shield and these Iron Legion bots explode into bits? Are you telling me Tony Stark built a fleet of bitch bots? Literally in a previous sin, you made the claim that these bots are indestructible. Thinks that mere guns can shoot down these indestructible iron suits. But now when presented with evidence they are not indestructible, you not only refuse to omit the previous sin, but now claim they're bitch bots. Also, Cap's shield is one of the most powerful objects in the Marvel Universe. What the hell did you think Cap was throwing? That ass in a circle? There are no strings on me. Ultron is in the cloud! Yes, because this random shit is a sin of this movie. Ultron cleared out, used the internet as an escape hatch. He used the what to what now? He used the internet as an escape hatch. In old ass man speak, he used the internet as an escape hatch. Wait, why the f*** don't you understand this again? You may have forgotten during that confusing battle that Rhodes was hit with Ultron's pulse bolt, crashed through a window, and fell about 50 feet into a metal walkway down below. But sure, he's just got an ouchie on his shoulder. The real sin is you didn't point out he's holding the wrong shoulder in the first place. He fell on his left, but is holding his right. The CinemaSins of old would have picked that up.
but now you're all about 20 minute videos and lame dad jokes. USA. USA. But I saw Stark's fear. I knew it would control him, make him self distraught. It might have been easier to just kill him, but the psychology experiment is a lot more fun. You know, I could be petty and just point out all the things that I satirized in the Infinity War video that Jeremy always does, like when I kept stating that Thanos should have just killed everyone. Kind of like how he's stating that Scarlet Witch should have done here, but I won't do that. But you just did. Smaller people? Uh, children! I lost the word there. Right, because an AI robot would somehow forget the word children in the midst of planning a worldwide annihilation. Wait, what was that? Worldwide annihilation. One more time. Annihilation. Annihil the what? Annihilation. <sighs> <laughs> Cuttlefish, deep sea fish, they make lots, disco lots. This is the point of the script that every bad guy needs to pass on some sort of trivial knowledge to the Maximoff twins so they can win Slumdog Millionaire, I guess. You mean who wants to be a millionaire? Slumdog Millionaire is a movie. You'd think a channel named CinemaSins would get that. You'd be wrong. I'm not. <clears throat> the guy with this gun clearly has no chance to kill Ultron, but Scarlet Witch is there to stop him just so it seems she's not completely useless. Yeah, but Witch isn't impervious to bullets, and neither is Quicksilver, as the end of this movie can attest. Oh, sh we need something for Black Widow to do. Um, I know, send in a bunch of evil human soldiers right now. Oh shit, we need a send to pad the runtime on this 19 minute video. Um, I know, let's talk about Black Widow negatively, because that will always make people laugh. Comedy! Does Thor see Quicksilver? Is that why he throws the hammer here? Splah! Also, the one guy with superpowers, who clearly doesn't need any help, decides, yeah, I need Thor's hammer, let's do this. The one guy with superpowers? That kind of suggests that he's the only one here with superpowers, and Thor is literally in this same scene. Done the whole mind control thing. Not a fan. Hawkeye avoids being mind controlled simply because the filmmakers wanted to tell a joke. Does anyone see the irony in a sin like this? Anyone? But Scratcher? Comic book hero movie splices frames from center stage into the final print. Jeremy makes... Captain America's Scarlet Witch-induced flashback will consist of recreating a scene from Swing Kids. A pop culture reference. Are you ready for our dance? Well, this is a fun cameo, but why is Scarlet Witch giving the Avengers happy memories? It isn't really a happy memory. In fact, I'd argue this is a sad one for Cap, considering. I want the big one. Luckily, the Avengers park their plane in an easily viewable area so that Scarlet Witch can control Hulk, which is just an excuse for the Hulkbuster scene, which this movie clearly needed. Missed opportunity for a that's what she said joke. I'm calling him Veronica. This is the second time this movie that Tony has called in some previously unknown support part of his arsenal for dramatic effect. Okay. Oh, was that it? I thought that there was more to this thing you decided to point out for the audience. Like, maybe try explaining why that was a sin. So, Tony has a suit that helps him defeat Hulk, the most undefeatable guy in all of Marvel lore, but somehow doesn't deem that superior suit worthy of wearing during normal Ultron warfare. Why isn't the Hulkbuster armor the default armor? Well, considering Ultron isn't necessarily a physical enemy so much as a techno-psychological one, Tony's Mark 43 armor is more than capable of taking on Ultron and his sentries. Besides, the Hulkbuster isn't designed to take on nimble enemies and instead to take brute force from the Hulk, something this armor fails at even in the comics. Hulkbuster armor is clearly badass, but if Black Widow can solve Hulk with a couple of arm touches and a hypnophrase, then why didn't everyone learn that Because Black Widow is the only one on the team with a vagina. Or did you miss the clear romantic angle this movie beats you over the head with? To prove this point, Thor knows the lullaby, but clearly failed when attempting it against the Hulk. Hey, big guy. The sun's getting real low. That's it. The sun's going down. Got him! Got him! I mean, were they trying to out Transformers 3 Man of Steel here? Setting aside the pop culture reference for a sec, this is nearly every story dealing with the Hulk. Destruction is the name of the game. Uh, literally. The reason it was so jarring in Man of Steel was because Zack Snyder doesn't understand the character. Superman wouldn't just destroy a city trying to stop an enemy. The Hulk absolutely would. The movie suggests that even in Hulk mode, Banner is somehow able to see and feel sorrow for his terrible Hulk actions. But he is. This is always how the Hulk is portrayed. He goes on a rampage, levels a city, reflects on the carnage, and then calms down, reverting to Bruce. Luckily for Hawkeye, the Avengers are disgraced, and now his house functions as a means to make him matter more. Jeremy used to make jokes about Hawkeye, and then he took an arrow to the knee. Yeah, well, Fury helped me set this up when I joined. And even though Captain America Winter Soldier established that Fury and... And let me stop you right there. One sin for not acknowledging how Clint's son is clearly Asian. I don't care how many Scooby Snacks he gave Linda Cardellini. Genetics don't work that way, yo. I saw something in that dream. What dream? I need answers. To what? I won't find him here. Wait, what? I'm so confused! See what I mean? 
he literally sent the dream Thor had already. Remember this? Well, this is a fun cameo, but why is Scarlet Witch giving the Avengers happy memories? Avengers happy memories. And now he just said, what dream? As if he didn't actually know. Again, I got shit from people satirizing this in the Infinity War parody video. Oh my god, we get it. Is there my mess? But why? Second Avengers film suddenly decides Hawkeye is somehow the moral center of this group of crime fighters, which is stupid, rushed, forced, and stupid. Except the comics have always placed Hawkeye as the avatar through which the audience views the other spectacular members of the Avengers. You see why the blanket statement of the books don't matter is pretty fucking dumb? Because these characters and their stories are based on the books, and just because you don't read them doesn't mean that this movie is at fault for you thinking established character traits are sins. Just in case you confused it with Soul Norway. I'm sending you here for completely skipping the scene where the movie establishes Helen Cho because you later ask who she is. You still think you're the only monster on the team? Smart people know she's talking about being an efficient killer, not that she can't have babies. However, should we send the fact that coming right on the heels of a revelation that she's sterile, this script was a little tone deaf about that? Nope, she's clearly referring to her sterility, which is what allowed her to become an assassin. That's what makes this conversation have so much gravity. That and the subtext of them being surrounded by toys in a child's bedroom. Actually, Josh Wheaton said- I don't care what Josh Wheaton says. He's just attempting to deflect criticism. Every time someone tries to win a war before it starts, innocent people die. Wait, but- what about when people try to win a war after it starts? Do innocent people still die then? Because I think they do. Way to miss Cap's point here. A war is something that is a result of preemptive attacks. Therefore, he made your point before you did. Do me a favor. Jesus, is there any reason for this guy to pop out of nowhere in this scene? Who's here that he'd be hiding from in a barn? Hydra. Ultron's going to evolve. How? Has anyone been in contact with Helen Cho? Who? See? Also, Helen Cho, the mother of Amadeus Cho, one of the most intelligent beings in Marvel and the current Incredible Hulk. Dr. Cho! Why is she not dead? She's got a huge gash in her chest. Jeremy continues to believe everyone should die from minor to moderate wounds. The real power is inside the cradle. The gem. Oh, Jesus. More f***ing things I'm gonna have to remember now. With all the artifacts, scepters, gems, minerals, and inventions in these movies, f*** these things right in the ear. Yeah, but who are you, and what is that purple thing? Movie expects me to keep up with all these artifacts, scepters, gems, minerals, and inventions, and I'm just going to say f*** this movie right in the ear. I'm just saying. I'm just saying. Thankfully, since thawing out, Cap has seen Matrix Reloaded. I do not want another single pop culture reference out of you for the rest of the trip. First off, these people are dead, knowing what we know about Captain America and his unbelievable strength. F***ing how? He landed on the windscreen, and you can clearly see that this woman is totally fine. I'm sending the package to you. How do you want me to take it? Well, me and everyone else who just thought of a sex joke is going to hell. Was it about boners? Because me thinks it was. I know Tony was at the internet hub place in Norway, but he can't Iron Man over here after that and help out. And wasn't that like last night? Ah, here it is. The beginning of Jeremy believing Iron Man is the solution to every single problem any character in Marvel is having. You did this in Spider-Man Homecoming, and now a movie called Avengers. Besides, you'd have sent this movie for Iron Man X Machina. Korean Air would like to take this subway tragedy excuse to remind you how awesome their air travel service is. You seriously underestimate Korea's willingness to self-promote. This is coming from a half-Korean. Scattered, dumped his memory, but not his protocols. Whatever bullshit helps you sleep at night when you ex machina a character back to life. The bastardization of words continues. First, you misuse ex machina to mean someone being saved. Now you're using it to describe bringing an AI back online. The f what's next? My shoestring is untied ex machina. My breath smells ex machina. I have to pee ex machina. We're mad scientists. We're monsters, buddy. We've got to own it. This is the speech one man of science gives another man of science to convince him to repeat a horribly failed previous experiment. Paging all real scientists. How pissed off does this make you? Probably not at all, considering this is how real science is conducted. I know the general public doesn't know shit about actual science, but repeating experiments is literally the most basic foundation of every scientific discipline. If Quicksilver isn't doing any Quicksilvering right now, then why is he seeing the bullet at Quicksilver speed? The sin here is thinking that being fast is something that Quicksilver has to turn on. This scene is to demonstrate his ability to react at lightning speed. Thor does some bull and gives birth to Vision, but I'm not sure I believe my eyes because this is the same guy John Nash hallucinated in a beautiful mind. Are these pop culture references fun for everyone? I just, I get annoyed when I hear them because like half the time they're obscure and the other time they just fall flat. This time, it was both. Every form he's built, every trace of his presence on the net. The net? The net? Every trace? This is some 1990s internet dialogue if I've ever heard it. I find this ironic, considering you didn't understand the earlier line when they said, Use the internet as an escape hatch. 
He used the what to what now? Again, it's just too bad for this movie that X-Men Days of Future Past Quicksilver came first because it makes this a lot less awesome. Sorry, Joss. It really doesn't because this version of Quicksilver is far more comic book accurate than what we got in Days. Pietro's name is not Peter, he's not American, he starts out evil and he has a twin sister. All things covered in this film and ignored in the other one. I mean, shit, one looks like Quicksilver and the other one doesn't, period. So the reason Ultron is doing this is because Jarvis stopped him from accessing nuclear launch codes and stuff that would make ending the world a lot easier. But why not just build your own bombs? Ultron clearly has all the knowledge he needs to do something way easier than something out of the Lex Luthor handbook. Jeremy doesn't know that a meteor, or in this case a meteorite, of this size is an extinction level event where not even the Tsar Bomba could match its destructive capabilities. In other words, no thermonuclear bomb is capable of the amount of destruction of a landmass only a few kilometers in diameter. You'll never... You'll never what? Wait, what? Cap can now somehow call his vibranium shield back to his arm via telepathy? Wow. Just... <laughs> wow. They show that Cap had an electromagnet installed in the shield like two hours ago. In this sequence, Black Widow will use taser knives to kill Ultron bots at the rate of an actual superpowered individual. Even though Widow constantly demonstrates why she should be an Avenger, Jeremy continuously questions her inclusion. Oh, sh See, if you never explain a hero's powers, like, even a tiny bit, then you can get away with having them mind explode a bunch of enemies in the finale. What the hell is there to explain at this point? She has telekinesis and mind control. You remind me of the people that go into Target and ask where things are while standing right in front of the thing. Sir, we have multiple bogeys converging on our starboard flank. Show them what we got. And what we got turns out to be discount Iron Man, as opposed to some kind of badass anti-aircraft guns you might expect on an airship like this. Technically, Rhodey is a badass anti-aircraft gun. Maria still thinks this is an appropriate weapon in battles like this. I mean, it worked, right? That's the best you can do! Come on. No, you come on. This shot pretty much sums up the entire movie right here. Useless robots doing useless things while the Avengers pick them off. Do you get a feeling Iron Man could have done this job himself? Jeremy truly believes that Iron Man is the answer to everything. The scene isn't so much a battle as it is a modeling session. Skip! In fact, I heard if you cut fast enough, the viewer won't be able to truly settle in and establish on any one shot of the action, thereby confusing them into thinking it all- I said skip, damn it! You know, with the benefit of hindsight- Uh-huh. Remember how you liked it when Hulk did that in the first movie, you whores? Laugh it up! Hmm, I don't remember Hulk punching the shit out of someone so hard they went flying in the first film. I think you got a bootleg copy from that dude that sells flowers and oranges. Every time Ultron dies in this movie, it's a bunch of nonsense. Isn't he still wandering around the internet? No, because they shut him off from the internet. You'd have known that if you were paying attention. Now I need you to turn this bird around, okay? Is Hulk a fucking pilot all of a sudden? One word, Jeremy. Autopilot. So that was the last Ultron, apparently, even though I still have my doubts about that. But what exactly made this the age of Ultron anyway? Aren't ages a period of many, many years? Merriam-Webster describes an age as a period of time dominated by a central figure or prominent feature, which describes this movie to a T. Also, Age of Ultron refers to the comic arc of the same name. Avengers team that has an all-powerful Scarlet Witch on their side literally doesn't need any other team members, most especially a dude who can glide on some metal wings. Jesus. Considering Wanda's fluctuating mental state and her propensity to civil war, that's some bullshit. Also, those wings aren't metal. They're carbon fiber, which would explain the rigidity flexibility ratio, which I gotta say. Awesome. That's awesome. That's awesome. It's awesome. It's awesome. It's awesome. That's awesome. That's awesome. She's the best. She's awesome. Awesome. Since people don't seem to understand these videos are all connected even after putting, if you haven't seen the previous video in this series, at the beginning of my later videos, I'm going to briefly explain something before the next video plays. Prior to CinemaSins releasing their Infinity War video, I'd released a parody video where I made fun of CinemaSins by predicting what they would say in their official video. Lines that I got near perfect are shown in the upcoming video as exhibits. When I originally released this video, many people were confused, completely missing the fact that I'm showing these clips from the parody video, and some even thought I was agreeing with CinemaSins. Needless to say, that was not the case. Perhaps this was my own hubris, thinking you were all as smart as me. But don't worry, I won't be making that mistake again. Even for giving the 9 seconds a black screen, this logo takes up 34 seconds for one goddamn studio. It's 35 seconds of logos, okay? And this is the first of many attempts to avoid saying exactly what I said in the parody video. It's actually quite hilarious to see the effect I had on your video, so here's 5 preemptive sins for being bitches. 
Thanos supposedly kills half of a people he encounters. So is this half of what was left of Asgard? Because it looks like a whole lot more. Half of a hell of a lot is still a hell of a lot, and the Asgardians escaped in escape pods. This was revealed in those 34 seconds of logos, and the Russo brothers confirmed this. The Tesseract, or your brother's head. This two hour and 30 minute incomplete movie where Thanos locates all the Infinity Stones is only necessary so that Thanos can snap half the universe's population to death, just so he can be lazy. Whoa, incomplete? I know it's called The Avengers, but this movie is Thanos' film. He is the main character, and he gets a complete arc, fulfilling his goal and winning in the end. This is exactly the story from the comic Infinity, which I highly recommend to anyone that isn't a drooling, babbling idiot that thinks the books don't matter. We don't have the Tesseract. It was destroyed on Asgard. If Thor doesn't send Loki down into Odin's trophy room at the end of Thor the Third, does the Tesseract survive it and float around in space? And does Thanos' quest end when he realizes he can't possess the space stone? Does the snap only produce impotent sparks at that point? It's a hypothetical, I grant, but I'm sending it anyway. Well, I'm sending your hypothetical, because if Thor doesn't send Loki to play Surtur's head into the Eternal Flame, Asgard doesn't get destroyed. Damn, did you not pay attention to that scene? And if Loki doesn't swiper the Tesseract, Surtur almost assuredly would have destroyed the Space Stone. The stones are not invincible. We have a Hulk. Why does Hulk hold back during the battle while Thanos destroys the Asgardian ship until the end when Loki says we have a Hulk? What the f*** was he doing before then? This? Thanos destroys Hulk with only one stone in his glove. Later, with many stones in the glove, his punch will be held by super angry Captain America after going toe-to-toe -to -toe with Iron Man on Titan for a good bit. And the power distribution slash comparisons in the MCU have never felt more squirrely than in this movie. This scene was meant to show you just how powerful Thanos is and to set the tone for the rest of the film for people who, like you, don't know shit about Thanos. Mentioning the stones in his glove means nothing as he never uses the Power Stone versus Hulk and all he did was stick his hand out versus Cap, while, again, never using any of the stones. The fight with Iron Man required the usage of the stones because A, Tony sometimes fights at long range, and because B, the bleeding edge armor is badass and extremely powerful. Just who the f*** is this guy? Ebony Maw, one of the members of the Black Order, a group of aliens that serve Thanos which usually consists of Black Dwarf, Proxima Midnight, Corvus Glaive, and Supergiant, who strangely isn't in this movie. Oh no, Loki's gonna die, again, like in Thor the Dark World, which definitely means he's probably not dead. And even if he is, I'm sending it anyway, because that Dark World scene did not get sinned enough. You padding the sin count, bro? I think you're padding the sin count. Thanos is coming. In previous movies, we were told Hulk and Banner have different memories, so how does Banner remember shit the Hulk alone knows? Even if that were true, when Thanos boarded the Asgardian ship, it's implied that Banner was transforming during the carnage, so he would definitely remember Thanos, especially after waking up in the Sanctum Santorum stairs. Tony Stark, famous Avenger, is running around Central Park, and nobody's bothering him. This guy is more famous than any president or celebrity in history. It's New York, man. I can just imagine some pot-bellied construction worker going, Tony Stark, never heard of her. Tony Stark? Do normal people see this sh While I know New Yorkers are up on their Avengers knowledge, I'm not quite so sure they've been informed about the masters of the mystic arts. Again, it's New York, man. My old lady got a bigger portal than that. Two weeks ago, Vision turned off his transponder. He's offline. Okay, if he had a f***ing transponder and knew it, he wouldn't have waited until two weeks ago to turn it off. So this is some bullshitty bullshit here. But why? Just because you said so? If it were three months ago, you'd have said the exact same thing. You patting the sink out, bro? Cap and I fell out hard. We're not on speaking terms. Really? What was that letter Cap sent you at the end of Civil War then? He specifically said, if you need me, I'll be there. Yeah, that's not speaking terms. He's specifically stating that if you need me to help save the world, then I'll be there. Cap and Iron Man don't interact in this movie once. The alien ship causes Peter's Spidey Sense to go off, and Homecoming didn't give us any indication Spidey Sense even existed. And now this movie is just thrusting it on me like, well, almost like they forgot it was a thing and are only now implementing it. <clears throat> what does this scene even mean? Penis Parker now has the ability to know what's going on miles away? I need you to cause a distraction. Holy <laughs> We're all gonna die! Ned, you are a treasure. <clears throat> Fucking Ned, man. <laughs> Be none of the classmates on the bus see Peter do this, but plenty of other drivers and passengers on this bridge do. And in the age of smartphones and dash cams and government surveillance, this transition was definitely seen and captured on film and Peter's cover is blown forever. Yes, because seeing a white kid with brown hair from behind who then puts on a mask means we all know who Spider-Man is. Sure, Jeremy. What's the matter with you kids? You've never seen a spaceship before? Yeah, sure. They've seen a spaceship, and it usually means bad things. You know you wanted to send Stan Lee. You trying to BS a BSer? When you're standing over there, and you're standing over there, 
And I don't know which way is up. Bring me the stone. Dude, a minute ago you were making metal fly with a flick of your wrist. Why do you even need the futuristic space axe dude to do this for you? Literally in this scene, you see that Ebony Maw can be overpowered. And the combination of Spider-Man, Wong, Strange, and Tony would have probably beaten or killed Maw if not for the intervention of Black Dwarf. I need to concentrate here for a second. Bruce's Hulk transformation troubles become an impotence metaphor. <clears throat> Hulk tile dysfunction. And does that mean when he's successful, it's like he's a huge green boner? Jeremy says green boner. I realize that nanobots are legit real world science to a degree, but Tony's suit is applying it in ways that make it utterly unbelievable. There are literally people performing magic in this scene, and nanotechnology, something you admit has a real world basis, is the one thing that's unbelievable? Unlock 17A. Thank f***ing God Stark had pre-designed and built and voice programmed for deployment a space-worthy Iron Spider-Man suit in the, I'm guessing, a few months since Spider-Man Homecoming? Okay, so there was a joke I made in my Blade Runner 2049 remastered video that went over a lot of people's heads, but it went something like, Normally I would ask if you'd watch the previous movie, but I see that you send that movie, so the answer is obviously no. Because in this case, you send Spider-Man Homecoming, but totally missed the scene at the end of the film that showed Tony had already built the Iron Spider suit. And this film is set two years after Homecoming, not a few months. Well, this is 100% definitely not a reaction to CinemaSins complaining about text place names and movies being used when they're unnecessary. This is 100% definitely not a reaction to CinemaSins complaining about text place names and movies being used when they are unnecessary. <laughs> <laughs> and there we have it, folks. CinemaSins just admitted they watch my videos. Also, this is another one of those attempts to not say exactly what I said in my parody video. You notice they didn't do another one of these for Scotland, Nowhere, or Vormir? Exactly. Of all the retro references to make, Groot is playing Defender. What a f***ing infuriating video game. Why is he even playing ancient Earth games anyway? Aren't there modern alien games to download from the nebula? If it wasn't obvious to those of you without a brain, nearly everything related to Guardians is retro on purpose. Their leader is basically stuck in the 80s, you dipstick. That Thor is convenient and illogical, but I do love Fig Newtons. Convenient? I'm pretty sure the Guardians were responding to a distress call from the Ass Guardians. Who the hell are you guys? That's an awfully rude way to greet people you don't know. I once woke up in this room and this dude tried to do all this gnarly shit to me with these strange tools and I was like, who the hell are you? And he said, I'm your fucking dentist, asshole. Yeah, but your dentist isn't someone that you don't know. So this entire line was irrelevant and a waste of everyone's time. Thanos retrieves another stone. He'll be too powerful to stop. He already is. How exactly did they expect to stop Thanos, who doesn't even need infinity stones to be powerful, but already has two of them? Plus, Thanos needs Gamora to get the soul stone. Keeping Gamora away from Thanos is strategy 101, but because there's no time, they hastily conjure up some no-ass plan. You couldn't be more wrong if you tried. The plan is to keep him from the other infinity gems. The morons were to go to nowhere and acquire the reality gem from the collector, while Thor heads to Nerebalin to get a Thanos-killing weapon. No one even knows knows Gamora knows where the soul gem is yet, so what the f*** are you talking about? Also, they went from kind of maybe flirty to kissy face hotel buddies and deeply in love, entirely off screen. I mean, what the hell do you want? A f***ing Rocky montage of Vision and Wanda falling in love? We already got that in Civil War, and if you ever read a damned comic, you'd see this coming from a mile away. Look, this is the f***ing MCU. I refuse to believe anything is an accident, and I'm losing sleep trying to unravel the meaning of we will deep fry your kebab. Is it a promise? A threat? A guarantee? A cipher key? The sign is taking up way more screen space than Wanda's face. It has to mean something. Are you f***ing serious? You know what? I guess this is my fault. CinemaSins' writers are trying their damnness to avoid anything I said, and while it's hilarious, it's also a little sad. I guess all those boys that said a small channel with only 30,000 subs couldn't take on one with 8 million were completely and utterly wrong. U.S.A. U.S.A. How the f*** did that alien assassin sneak up on an android without being heard or seen or sensed? You think androids can sense people? And Corvus Glaive is basically a space ninja. Audience applause break. Don't you mean hot Ryu ex machina? You were supposed to say that word for word. <laughs> I can't help but to laugh at how Jeremy has attempted to enunciate his laugh because I made fun of it. Son, you really laugh like this. <laughs> Damn near no difference. These henchmen failed to get the stone they were sent after, and they peace out to save their own skin. And I'm pretty sure even they know that Thanos values the stones over his henchmen. So what the f*** are these minions thinking, bailing out like this? Pretty sure they're thinking to live to fight another day. 
I mean, they don't actually return to Thanos. They bide their time and collect the Outriders to fight in the Battle of Wakanda. Stay close, check in, don't take any chances. We just wanted time. You know, to figure out the whole having sex with a synthetic vibranium body thing. It's a lot tougher than you'd think. You sure about that? She's a woman, and women kind of already use synthetic body things. What's wrong, little one? The fact that Thanos would ever have stopped on his kill quest for even a moment because of a cute kid is a big pill to swallow. That's because you don't really know anything about Thanos. If this movie succeeds at anything, it's fleshing out Thanos and showing you he's not just another CGI movie monster, but an actual character with an amazing amount of depth. I mean, he's right up there with Ledger's Joker, if not better. You're quite the fighter, Gamora. She asked a question. That's it. She's displayed zero fighter characteristics. I'd have thought that with this particular movie, you wouldn't try to manipulate a scene for a sin, considering everyone and their mother has seen this film. But Cinema Sin's got a Cinema Sin. This is the scene where Thanos sees that she's a fighter. This half-genocide scene illustrates a curious character detail in Guardians of the Galaxy, when they told us Gamora was the only survivor. It's very likely that the people who made Gamora's rap sheet are simply wrong. However, if you notice this, why is it in your Guardians 2 video that you assume Gamora can't hold on to Drax because she isn't that strong? Even though it says right here that she has cybernetic enhancements. Hmm? Thought I forgot about that shit, didn't you? Swear to me on your mother. Movie characters think that a promise will be a bond if they swear on a loved one, but of course it doesn't work that way, cliche. In other words, <clears throat> Natiri here asks Andy Dwyer to keep an unkeepable promise. I realize she has a hate boner of justice, but goddamn. Jeremy says hate boner. You knew I'd come. I counted on it. So he assumed that the Guardian ship would get the distress signal from the Statesman, they'd follow it, they'd just so happen to run into Thor, he'd tell them about the Reality Stone, and that she would agree to come here? This is f***ing impossibly brilliant. He didn't even tell Thor he'd be coming here. He just told his minions to get the two stones on Earth and meet him at Titan. I'm seriously running out of phlegm. <clears throat> we later learn that this is all a ruse for the Guardians, but why does Thanos know that they're coming? And if he knew this, why doesn't he just kill everyone? I know you all love this movie, but this is pretty stupid. Why do Drax and Mantis go back to normal when Thanos leaves? The stone powers aren't proximity-based, but somehow the damage he did was only temporary. Seriously? <clears throat> they survived this. I mean, why doesn't he just kill them? This is a hologram of Ross, whose physical body is in a completely different room somewhere in the country. And yet he's able to walk around this room, like he's physically in this one. Is he in a replica room with a virtual reality display? And if so, there should be a camera somewhere in here tracking his eye movements so he can face the right way when he's talking to people, right? Oh, come on. How the heck does this projection work? The movie is just not interested in explaining literally anything. Where's the fight? F***ing Bucky. <laughs> The white wolf has arrested long enough. Fucking Bucky. The hell is this spray stuff Tony's using here to seal the breach in the ship's hull? Nano magic? Canned convenience? It's magic whiz and it's cheesing me off. It's mechanical sealant. This shit exists in real life. Way to introduce a new character in the movie in the 19th film of a franchise and completely kill him off in an hour. I mean, there's five villains in this film. Did you seriously expect all of them to survive? And what kind of complaint is this anyway? Ronan the Accuser's dead. Iron Monger is dead. Hela is dead. And Loki only took so long to die because of the fangirls. Don't do this. Varmir! Ultimately, sisterly love is what causes her to give up the location of the Soul Stone, and therefore the fate of the entire universe. She begged her boyfriend to kill her, rather than let Thanos win. Yep, beat you to this one too. Why would you tell him? Everyone in this movie just gives Thanos what he wants because they're trying to save one person. The whole goddamn universe is at stake, you dicks. You're gonna need more than one stupid eyeball. But you're handing him a fake eyeball. So he still only has one stupid eyeball, right? What the f***? Some random computerized alien eyeball has a connection port that matches Thor's flesh-based eye socket connection port? And also this one. How is that obviously androidian eyeball going to work for a Norse god? So This is the second Marvel movie to waste Peter Dinklage. Actually the first. The other one was a Fox film. And I wouldn't say waste. He was awesome in this role. And he killed everyone anyway. All except me. Let me do some math here. 300 dwarves were here, one is left, carry the 9, multiply by pi r squared, that's 99.67% of the dwarf population. Which means he must have let 299 other dwarves on some other hammer building station live. You're making the mistake of thinking Thanos wipes out half of a particular species when what he actually wants is to have all life, dispassionately. This means that a certain species can go extinct, 
but it also means that another species can go completely untouched. In theory, it could even summon the Bifrost. Because why not? Thor's gonna have to get to Earth faster than a ship can take them somehow. So bake in the Bifrost into this baby and we're set. Stormbreaker in the comics actually can open portals to other dimensions for fast travel. The movie tied this to the Bifrost to associate it with something the audience is already familiar with. The stone demands a sacrifice. Why does the Soul Stone require so many more parameters to acquire it than any other stone? It's like the original creators of the stones themselves said, okay, if you're powerful enough to hold the other five gems, we'll let you change reality, move across space at will, increase your strength, and harness the most powerful energy in the universe, go into the past and the future, and access other people's minds. But when it comes to controlling all life in the universe, that's where we draw the line. But this is bullshit. The Tesseract basically evaporated anyone that touched it. The ether warped reality so it was damn near unfindable. The Time Stone was guarded by the Masters of the Mystic Arts and the Sorcerer Supreme, and the Power Stone was being held by the Celestials. Anyway, this is probably a callback to the gems originally in the comics being called the Soul Gems. I feel like the sacrifice of Gamora would have played a lot better if Thanos had been given his own proper origin film. This is Thanos' film. How you haven't realized that and claim to be a channel that's all about film is just laughable. This death is sad, until you realize that A, the Time Stone will end up figuring into her coming back to life anyway, and B, that despite all the problems since the firing of James Gunn, Guardians of the Galaxy 3 was ready to go into production after this movie. I'm willing to bet it isn't the Time Stone, but Ant-Man that reverses all of this. That's me! Can you buzz me in? Something's entered the atmosphere. Just one line about how Thanos or something with the stones tells him exactly where each one is would be f***ing terrific. It didn't help him at all with the Soul Stone. He needed Gamora to tell him that. So why the precision knowledge with the others? This isn't Thanos leading this attack. It's Proxima Midnight in Corvus Glaive. Remember, they attempted to take the Mind Stone from Vision already? They've been tracking Vision this entire time. These ships hit the Earth at massive speed. I don't understand why they don't do to the planet what meteors that large would do. Because they aren't traveling anywhere near the speed meteors actually travel, which can be anywhere between 25 to 160,000 miles per hour. That's a minimum of 32 times the speed of sound. I'm gonna hold it open. That's suicide. So is facing Thanos without that axe. Okay, dude, you f***ing had a magical hammer made by this guy at this place, and your sister smashed it like it was chocolate. I take offense to the idea that an axe from here could defeat Thanos and the fact that it nearly does. Here's the problem. Hela was worthy. The fact is that she was the original owner of Mjolnir. Couple that with the fact that she was just extremely powerful and this isn't as far-fetched as you're attempting to make it. Theoretically, Mjolnir could have nearly beaten Thanos as well. Stormbreaker and Mjolnir are made from Uru, a metallic material that is essentially immune to magic or energy projections. Oh good! Just what I wanted to see in this giant Marvel movie. Swarms of easily killable CGI monster clones. These guys are Outriders, some of the most powerful minions in Marvel. Easily killable are not the words you want to be using here, especially considering they overpowered Captain America, Black Panther, and the Hulkbuster armor. They went to the trouble of showing him getting a Wakandan-made vibranium arm, and in battle all we really see him do is fire a machine gun. Don't you need two arms to shoot this kind of gun? We open the barrier. In order to keep the aliens from going around and flanking them, they open the f***ing shield barrier directly in front of them. And honestly, it's one of the most baffling military decisions on film since Denzel started firing on friendly tanks and courage under fire. Because it clearly makes more sense to keep the fighting in front of them, where they can easily contain the situation, opposed to letting the Outriders completely surround them when they clearly don't have the numbers to combat that. You remind me of Flat Earthers who think it's possible to guard every inch of the supposed ice wall. I love how they both leap in here punching. Like they somehow know these aren't aliens with poison skin or acid blood. F there are frogs here on Earth that have poison skin. Well, Black Panther is wearing a vibranium suit and Cap is using vibranium gauntlets, so I think they aye. If Thor can withstand the energy of a star, then what can kill him? The energy of a star, because it very nearly does kill him. And if Puberty Groot didn't fix the axe, it very well may have. Audience applause break. I told you he wouldn't remove us in here. I told you. How the f***? Did Thor know where to go once he got his new axe? Why'd he go to Earth instead of Titan? <laughs> Called it. How the f*** does Thor know where the fighting is? And why go to Wakanda instead of Titan? And when we faced extinction, I offered a solution. Genocide. But random. Dispassionate, fair to rich and poor alike. You know what would be awesome, since the Death Snap doesn't discriminate? If it killed Thanos, too. Imagine Thanos actually deciding for the greater good that he could even die with such a snap. But guess what? You don't have the balls for that. Thanos believes that it is his responsibility to see this through to the end. How would he know if his plan worked if he also died? With all six stones, I could simply snap my fingers. 
they would all cease to exist. Why though? Why a snap and not an okay sign or salute or a middle finger? Because a snap of the fingers signifies something that is simple and quick. Do you do an okay sign or salute when you say the words like that? Think about it. Don't let him close his fist. What? He can't use the stones if he doesn't close his fist? Since f***ing when, movie? Every single scene in this film where Thanos is using the gauntlet, he's closing his fist. Pay attention. <laughs> punch somehow doesn't kill Peter. Superhuman strength, durability, a protective suit made by Tony Stark. Mantis is thrown several hundred feet away from Thanos. Spidey reacts to this and apparently can jump said amount of feet before Mantis lands. Superhuman agility, speed, spider sense, perfect equilibrium. I know we like him and she loves him, but honestly, kill his ass and destroy the stone, you idiots. The universe is at stake. I agree, but the line is the universe is at stake, you dicks. You heard okay? Notice you've copied my beard. Good thing there's no one to fight for a few seconds so we can have a humorous exchange about hair. F***ing dicks. Ah, <laughs> there's the dicks. Vision Ex Machina. Blurred Vision Ex Machina. I'm just saying, they're basically the same video. So Iron Man's shield can apparently withstand that. Good to know. It's not like these stones are the most powerful f***ing objects in the universe or anything. Yeah, this is the bleeding edge armor. This armor is serious. Cap, that's him. <laughs> Wait, what was that? <laughs> One more time. Ha 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 ha. I understand my child better than anyone. You could never. If we're about to see a reenactment of Spike Lee's old boy here, I'd only like to see one specific scene. Jeremy wants to see a father have sex with his daughter. No, I'm not joking. The Soul Stone is the only one to demand a sacrifice so you understand its power. But the Mind Stone is the largest one and takes up the leader position of all the stones in the glove. Well, it kind of makes sense when you think about the mind or brain being the thing that controls everything in your body. Not to mention you need a strong mind to control all the abilities of the other gems at once. Honestly, should anything be able to defeat that glove right now? Let alone a new axe that we only just learned about? No, no, no. You just learned about Stormbreaker. For those of us who actually read the comics, we weren't surprised in the slightest. Sure, this version is a little different, but this axe has incredible feats. And remember, it's nearly impervious to energy projection. We now interrupt this Avengers movie to bring you a special presentation of Harry Potter and the Deathly Hallows, starring Josh Brolin as Dumblemore. God damn it. The Dumblemort got me, and I was trying to go this whole video without removing a sin. Part of the movie where the snap of death plays a game. Who's gonna live and who's gonna die? And apparently, it takes its time picking and choosing, because all the dramatically relevant deaths wait for each other so we can see them all, rather than happening at the same time. But they are happening at relatively the same time. Again, this is for the benefit of the audience. It's a fucking movie, not a documentary. <laughs> While it's distressing to see your favorite characters wasting away, don't you just know they're all going to be back? Yeah, but it doesn't take away the sting of seeing Spider-Man die like that, though. And hell, we don't even know if everyone is coming back, or if the survivors will survive the next film. Jeez, did Thanos move out into Camazons or whatever the fuck that was in A Wrinkle in Time? You know what that means! Chris Pine is gonna complete the Chris Quadfecta in Avengers 4! Woohoo! As if right on cue, Jeremy makes a pop culture ref- sins for making the audience wait this long. Who the f*** do you think you are, Valve? Lala. Hawkeye's entire goddamn family gets snapped away. His wife and three children. In Ant-Man 2, more ant-ning, we saw Scott lose everyone around him when he went into the quantum realm. We saw both Fury and Maria Hill disappear, and meanwhile, Craig and his family are completely okay. You hear that, Craig? F*** you and your stupid family, Craig. Yes, you all waited seven months and two days for this. Congratulations. 34 seconds of the Marvel logos. Holy Thank God it finally showed up. I thought I was gonna pass out. I feel like Ethan Hunt getting a hit of oxygen after that free dive in Rogue Nation. A pop culture reference and logo sin combined into one? Damn, bringing out all the stops for this video, aren't we? So the fuel cells were cracked during battle and we figured out a way to reverse the ion charge and bought ourselves about 48 hours of flight time. Why the f 
did they take off in this ship without inspecting every last detail? I know the urge to go home is strong, but they could have stayed on Titan for a while to potentially find supplies, fix whatever needed to be fixed, and find fuel from at least two ships that crash landed during that fight, Nebula's Necrocraft and the Q ship. I feel like this whole thing was made up just to get Captain Marvel involved. Wait, what? Did you take a stupid pill when watching the ending of Infinity War? You must have, because you're suggesting that Tony was in any mental state to check a ship he knows nothing about for fuel right after being stabbed by Thanos and having people disappear in front of him after losing the Time Stone. Wait, each of these sinks in this bathroom have individual shaving mirrors? Is that really necessary? It's about as necessary as pointing this out. Gwyneth Paltrow doesn't know what movie she's in in this scene. Picking on Gwyneth Paltrow for no discernible reason ex machina cliche. He did exactly what he said he was going to do. Thanos wiped out 50% of all living creatures. Even though the world governments are in pieces, they were able to take not only an impromptu census, but also a cat and dog census. This scene isn't stating that they took a census, only that Thanos said something and that something happened. They have no reason to doubt anything Thanos stated, so if he stated he intended to kill half the population, that's probably what he did. Honestly, until this exact second, I thought you were Bill bear Har har, Tones. This falls just as flat as what he called Ebony Maw Squidward in Infinity War. Rando pop culture references don't always equate to comedy, movie. Amazing, coming from the guy that literally only uses pop culture references to keep up the facade that this series isn't meant as actual criticism. And saying the Squidward joke fell flat? Hmm, let's see what actual audiences thought of that scene. Let's get lost, Squidward. <laughs> <laughs> I like it. Right. Another! Please get lost, Squidward. <laughs> We're the Avengers, not the pre-Avengers. Okay. Right? You made your point. Tony, Tony just sit, great, sit down. Pick a lane, movie. Either Tony is so upset that he can't think straight, or he's just lighthearted enough to make whimsical comments about Captain Marvel and call Rocket a Build-A-Bear. It can't be both. Aren't you the same guy that said Tony should have checked the Benatar for fuel after Thanos killed the Iron Spider? You're contradicting yourself here. And where the hell have you been all this time? There are a lot of other planets in the universe. And unfortunately, they didn't have you guys. How did the story of Thanos looking for the Infinity Stones elude you in your travels? Are you serious? The Avengers didn't know about Thanos looking for the Infinity Stones until Infinity War, and they fought his army 11 years ago. Thanos didn't make his intentions known until he attacked Xandar, and by this time, Captain Marvel was busy farting around with the Skrulls light years away. This is gonna work, Steve. I know it will, because I don't know what I'm gonna do if it doesn't. Go back to the Fantastic Four? Up your ass. We use the stones to destroy the stones. Weird. I used my farts to cover for other farts, but there were still farts left over, so what gifts? This is what happens when you push CinemaSins into a corner and they try to prove that they are a comedy channel and not a criticism channel. You get jokes like these. This is why we say that they are mainly a movie criticism channel, because when they actually try to be funny, well... Once again, tele-holograms will have a normal conversation with each other like they're literally standing in a room like this, when in fact they're all by themselves, in some sort of hollow booth that I would just once like to see in operation. If they're wearing VR, we'd see it on their holograms. If they have a panoramic video screen around them that is tied to a certain channel, then where is camera? Come on, is this really something wrong with Avengers Endgame? Who the hell is sitting around going, Gee, I wonder how these holograms work. I mean, there's a talking space raccoon on the screen who not only speaks English, but does so with a Brooklyn accent. Who gives a shit about how these holograms work and why would the movie be better for explaining it? I'm sorry, that must have been a very long five years. Yeah, but that's just it. For me, it was five hours. If the quantum realm makes years seem like hours, why did Michelle Pfeiffer look 30 years older when she got rescued from it? Ant-Man said that time works differently in the quantum realm, not that the quantum realm makes years seem like hours. At the end of Ant-Man 2, Janet specifically warned Scott to avoid time vortexes, meaning she knew to avoid them while she was there. And don't get sucked into a time vortex. We won't be able to save you. What if there was a, a way that we could enter the quantum realm at a certain point in time, but then exit the quantum realm at another point in time. So you spent five hours in the quantum realm, and because of relativity, that was five years on Earth. The problem is, in both the quantum realm and in the outside world, time was moving forward. So why do you think there are points that you can go to just because of your five-hour experience with relativity? As I just explained, the point is that time works differently in the quantum realm. No one said anything about relativity. You see, this is why everyone should have watched Ant-Man 2. It's explained that there are time vortexes and those vortexes are what the Avengers use to time travel. Now Scott asking why can't they use his experience to go back in time is due to him having literally time traveled to the future. Logic dictates that if you can enter a vortex that continue into the future, there might be a vortex that can go to the past. So who do we talk to about this? I'm not a quantum physicist. Look, I know Tony's brilliant. 
but this has never been his forte. If anything, Scott himself should know some more appropriate scientists through his associations with Hank. Why not see if Larry Fishburne is still alive? Except physics is precisely where Tony's expertise is concentrated. With Hank Pym, Shuri, and Spider-Man all dead, the Hulk and Iron Man are the only two geniuses they know about with the capability to handle this, and Bill Foster is on the run. Jesus, did no one watch Ant-Man 2? We could go back, we could get them. Sure, getting your friends and loved ones back is a noble idea, but it's also morally murky. Remember, life has been going on for five years now. People have moved on. People are in new marriages. Some dangerous people who used to torment others are out of the picture. This would cause even more chaos and be like Castaway times 3.5 billion. So essentially what you're saying is that all the innocent people who were snapped away through no fault of their own should stay dead simply because the people that survived have moved on? Can't say I agree with that, CinemaSins. Model rendered. Holy Tony solves the eternal question of time travel in less time than it took to actually write the scene. Is that really unbelievable in the context of this universe, though? Tony has solved countless seemingly impossible scientific problems like creating AI, synthesizing new elements, and building insane exoskeletons, the first of which was done in a cave with a box of scraps. Then you throw in the fact that we know time travel or manipulation is possible in this universe, and this really seems like an inevitability. Trying to get you to stop has been one of the few failures of my entire life. Pithy one-liner aside, the f he totally stopped. He's out here raising a family in a goddamn cabin in the woods, washing his own dishes and tucking his kid into bed at night. He's not out there Iron Manning anymore, so this line is a big old sack of Pepper wasn't the one that got him to stop, though. Thanos beating the Avengers is the reason he stopped. Okay, here we go. Time travel test number one. This test is not successful, but it's also not unsuccessful in that they do actually transport Scott over time. So this means that two f***ing scientists have made giant breakthroughs in time travel over the same roughly 12-hour period. First of all, no. Bruce did not succeed in transporting Scott over time. What he did was push time through Scott. There's a difference. And the reason Bruce figured out this was possible was because Scott proved the existence of the time vortexes by traveling through them. The same reason Tony made his discovery. A fully functioning time-space GPS. It's weird to me that Tony knew enough of Hank Pym's work to properly make a device that would help people travel through time in the quantum realm, a place where only two people have ever been, with one of those people evaporated by the snap and the other being lovable doofus Scott. I thought the first Ant-Man was about how Hank took his work and hid it from everyone, including Tony's dad. And the evil Darren Cross tried to make his own tech that ended up liquefying a baby lamb. And they ended up blowing up dude's lap. I'm pretty sure they didn't give this tech to Tony. So the result is Tony's a genius, don't think time travel possible. By rule, I think the movie has to do this because the how is all that explainable and the movie is three hours but jesus it took doc brown 30 years to perfect time travel and it didn't even require that much explanation because you trusted the amount of time that went into it the dialogue presented when scott pleads with tony to help them and the later scene showing tony's failed attempts at solving the problem demonstrates that tony had already been playing around with the idea of time travel Time travel is a staple of science fiction and something physicists have been theorizing about for years. Of course Tony has considered it before knowing of Hank Pym's work. This is why he knows quantum fluctuation messes with the Planck scale. Scott's visit introduces new possibilities, so it causes Tony to revisit and figure out the problem. This is 100% on Scott here. How did he not notice a motherfucking spaceship about to land a few yards away before he opened the taco? This is you manipulating a scene once again, when Scott unwrapped his taco, the Benatar was not even in the vicinity yet and only landed when it was in his hand. Thor! Thor's fat, get it? It's a joke for almost the whole movie, except when the movie wants you to take it seriously. Then back to joke, get it? Fat Thor is actually the best character building aspect of this movie. This man has lost his brother, his sister, his father, his mother, half his people, and feels responsible for billions of deaths simply because he tried to savor his victory over Thanos and didn't kill him instantly. He's let himself go because sometimes this is what people do when they've lost everything. It's funny, but it makes sense. Of all the bullshit this movie did not need, it's Hawkeye's career as a vigilante. But even more, I can't believe Hawkeye is the kind of guy who can take on a horde of Yakuza on his own. You might say Hawkeye has fought tons of enemies stronger than this, and I say, with help. This is what I've been telling you forever. Hawkeye is far more badass than you have been giving him credit for. There is a reason this guy is an Avenger, and it's because he can do shit like this. One side there, Lebowski. Hilarious reference, but this is a reference to a movie that starred Jeff Bridges, who was in the original Iron Man, stop with the constant references, especially when they make no goddamn sense. Gah! Jeremy sends a film for doing something he does all the time, Ex Machina. If you travel to the past, that past becomes your future, and your former present becomes the past, which can't now be changed by your new future. Are we really just going to leave out the alternative timeline explanation here? Because this reason focuses on the effects of time travel on one individual. It basically says all those new timeline people can go f*** themselves. 
Except the film answers this question by showing you that nothing really happens to these other timelines when they slip into them. However, the long-term effects of time travel haven't been explored yet, and I suspect they will further answer these questions with Mordo and Doctor Strange too. We only have enough pin particles for one round trip each. And these stones have been in a lot of different places. They later accidentally themselves into Hank's lab in 1970 and grab some pim juice then. But why wouldn't they just start by going back to a time when Hank was alive and grab a bunch of them then? So that they'd have almost unlimited chances at this. I'm not just throwing out a crazy amateur theory. This makes all the sense. And there are at least two super geniuses on this team. Obviously, the time heist works on a cinematic level, but your idea runs the risk of failing and being stuck in the past. A better idea would be for Fat Thor to return to Wakanda in 2018, where 2018 Thor has Thanos subdued and chopped Thanos' arm and head off with Stormbreaker. Boom. All six stones. I like the Avengers theme a lot. Like, it's one of the most recognizable themes in modern movies. But they lean hard into that in this movie. This would be like Star Wars playing the opening fanfare during all your favorite moments in Return of the Jedi. No, it would be like if Star Wars played the Imperial March through all your favorite moments in Empire and Return of the Jedi. Which they do. Movie gives me another chance to send this stupid gun cocking that Black Widow does during the hero shot. Hordes of aliens are raining down on New York, but sure, the fate of the world might end up resting on that clock. Dude with a literal bow and arrow in the background, Sends the gun. Oh, thanks for the rooftop assist, Ancient One. You ever think of maybe sending some of the masters you know out to the battle, since this directly threatens Earth? Does the threat only have to be mystical before you get off your ass? Says this while literally showing a scene of her getting off her ass. Hmm, I think I know a guy parodying CinemaSins who said something similar. I'm gonna have to call the director. That's okay. Trust me. Hail Hydra. Look, this is a great scene. It's even a fun throwback to Winter Soldier in the middle of the 2012 Avengers timeline. But this asshole decides, eh, we don't have to call the director about this. Even though he's never been told that Cap is on board with Hydra. I mean, he doesn't even think it might be a trick or some What reason would they have to think Cap in 2012 is trying to trick them? From their perspective, demonstrating that he has knowledge of Hydra and hasn't yet killed them means he's on their team, period. The Infinity Stones create what you experience as the flow of time. Remove one of the stones... And that flow splits. Oh, is that so? So in 2023 present day, with the stones destroyed, what did that do with the flow of time? Or do the atoms still count? <laughs> this is incredible. The Sorcerer Supreme literally says what happens when you remove a stone, and seconds later you ask what happens when you remove a stone. <sighs> anyway, yes, the atoms do count. I can't risk this reality on a promise. I'll also require a hunch about what Doctor Strange is going to do in a few years. If I have that, reality risked. Or she knows that Doctor Strange wouldn't give up the Time Stone without a reason? You know, the explanation in the film? <laughs> Thor totally f***s the Dark World's Thor. There's a battle about to take place here. And you screwed him because you want your hammer back? Sure, Steve brings the hammer back, but Thor doesn't know that someone's going to make a return trip until later when Bruce finds out about the branch realities from the Ancient One. Bruce quickly suggests returning everything back to its proper time after being rebuffed by the Sorcerer Supreme, meaning that the plan to return everything was probably already in place. Guys, I've got it. Since we lost the wonderful Stan Lee, let's just cast Mark Maron to stand in for his cameos in future MCU movies. Look at him. It's perfect. Jeremy says all this and treats it as a sin of this movie. How is this a sin, you might ask? Who the fuck knows? But the raccoon didn't have to climb a mountain. But how do they know to climb this mountain, or any mountain at all? There's an entire planet to explore, but they're positive the f***ing soul stone is right here? They know because pretty much everything was explained to them by Nebula, who had it explained to her by Gamora. The only thing no one knew was that a sacrifice was required. This being the second time we've seen a successful acquisition of the soul stone, I'm wondering, what the f*** does Red Skull do after this? Does he wait until someone brings it back? And remember, Steve is supposed to come back here later and replace the stone like this never happened. Where does he put it? The fact that this stone is acquired by a sacrifice rather than stolen makes it a problematic stone to return, no? According to the Russos, Red Skull is set free when someone attains the Soul Stone. And obviously returning the stone isn't problematic because Steve actually does it. The fact that it isn't shown to you doesn't mean it's a problem or a sin of this film. Can't get her back. Can't be undone. Well, yeah, it can actually. Since you guys obviously don't give a f about other timelines, you can just go back to a time where she's lived and just take her with you. I know, I said this in my parody video mocking CinemaSins, but this is true. After they undo the snap, they can just use the pin particles to return to right before she died getting the Soul Stone and bring her to this timeline while giving that timeline's Clint the Soul Stone so that he can complete his mission. There's no real reason they cannot do this. The Hulk snap brought back all the dead folks to life, but let's think about the practicalities here. What happened to people who were like on a flight when Thanos did his sh 
Do they appear in midair and do a wily e. Coyote shrug before falling to their deaths? Or did Hulk guide them to safety? And how unfair is it that the people who were snapped away off an airplane get to live, but the people who crashed into the airplane just stay dead? And if the people who died were brought back, then check the cemeteries because we have a zombie apocalypse on our hands. This was something I was curious about myself until I stumbled upon Kevin Feige explaining that Smart Hulk had the forethought to return people safely relative to their original position. This means if they were in the air, they were returned to the ground or the safest landmass. This is backed up by the film showing no falling humans from the sky. As for the people that died due to their craft losing a pilot, yep, they stay dead. With the stones you've collected for me, create a new one, teeming with life that knows not what it has lost, but only what it has been given. So with the stones, he could have literally done anything he wanted, and he chose option Z, cut the population of the universe in half. What a f***ing dick! I was on board with Thanos' thoughtful madness because it made a certain sense for a villain to exercise a cruel intelligence on life in his quest for balance. But now that we know he could create a whole universe, that whole balance thing that he once espoused and I believed in no longer works. He could have created two Earths connected by an accordion tunnel and told astrophysics to go f*** itself while half the population moved to the literal new world. Source material doesn't matter in the CinemaSins universe, but the word on the street is that the comic book Thanos did all this to impress a lady named Death. That's right, the power of boners made Thanos do this, and his actions make way more sense under that context than this does. The thing that you have to understand is that this is a different Thanos. He has learned from the mistakes of his future self, and he realized that people will attempt to change what he does. The previous Thanos thought everyone would be grateful. His new plan is to create a new universe that doesn't know about him killing half of them. That way no one will try to undo his actions. Also, Jeremy says boner. Avengers! Assemble. Yes! Although, this means we're gonna get a stupid jumble of effects-driven bullshit fan service for the next several minutes before there are actual stakes involved, aren't we? What kind of horrific, slack-jawed, bird-brained pig nipple would send this amazing scene? Them's fighting sins. Yeah. What do you want me to do with this damn thing? Get those stones as far away as possible! No! We need to get them back where they came from! This might be the dumbest part of the movie, because Cap and Hulk's orders are not mutually exclusive. They should be getting the stones as far away as possible so that the Thanos can't get them. And they can always take the stones back after they beat Thanos anytime they want to solve the branch reality problem. Dude, are you not watching the movie? Thanos just took on Iron Man, Thor, and Captain America wielding Mjolnir, and damn near won by himself. Now he has his army with him. This is nowhere near a lock that they will win, so it's best to at least try to take these stones back to the past. If I tell you what happens, it won't happen. This is absolutely telling him what happens. Is it? Because I'm pretty sure Tony has no idea he's about to kill himself. As I see Ant-Man and the Wasp smiling at each other and shrinking down, I'm once again compelled to ask why they can't fly into Thanos' ear canal or nostril, re themselves, and explode Thanos into a hundred million balanced chunks of meat. This was the problem with all the people suggesting that Ant-Man should go up Thanos' butt. Thanos is incredibly strong and durable. What would end up happening is Ant-Man would crush himself inside Thanos' body. That would be like trying to destroy two cinder blocks by inflating a balloon between them. Come on, of all the scenes in the Marvel movies that don't make the power differential clear between two opponents, it's this one. Captain Marvel is world stronger than Thanos, and Thanos has taken a beating so far. In what universe is Captain Marvel worlds stronger than fucking Thanos? Did you not just see him sling her like a ragdoll? If she were worlds stronger, she'd have wrestled the gauntlet away, and she had her hands on it twice. It also took both her hands to keep his one hand from closing. Yeah, 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 headbutt. But Thanos had been fighting Thor, Iron Man, Captain America with Mjolnir, and Scarlet Witch, and had taken significant damage in this battle, and is still holding his own. This is just two powerful characters going back and forth. I don't see the issue here. During the struggle, Iron Man is able to remove the stones from the nanotech gauntlet. Neither there was an ejector button or he pried them off. I don't know what the hell happened. It looks like the stones may have fallen off and landed on the ground, but that could just be pieces of Tony's suit for all I know. But somehow, this turns into Tony having possession of the stones, no questions asked. In Infinity War, we were shown that Tony basically has mental control over the nanomachines in his suit, so all he would have to do is use that ability to transfer the stones to his hand. Do they have to turn to dust if you kill a bunch of fools with the Infinity Gauntlet? Like, can you ask them to turn into something a little jazzier? Like confetti? Or Dippin' Dots? Or play slime? Or something, I don't know, less dour? Yes, you can. See why asking questions don't count as sins? I guess Tony ordered up the make all the Thanos army disappear in front of Thanos before Thanos disappears snap. If you're the Avengers, don't you get a little worried that Thanos isn't going away during all this? Obviously, Tony wants Thanos to see his people die the same way he was forced to watch Spider-Man die. And if I'm an Avenger, I clearly understand what is going on here and would moon Thanos to rub it in before he dies. 